Hey, everybody, I'm back. Sort of. You'll, you'll see what, what I mean by that by paying attention to today's show. But we got the studs and the stinkers from week 17, and we've got some footy awards to nominate or Whee! something like that. I don't know. Have fun. Foot Clan, the season is over, but listen, it's time to celebrate. It's time to upgrade your league, and you know what I'm talking about. That sweet, sweet trophy you can upgrade your league with these fantasy champs, epic 19-year perpetual trophies. They've got championship belts, and you've heard us talk about it. Right now, if you add one of the trophies or belts to your cart, you can put in one of those fantasy champs rings, Woo! those championship rings, and just use the promo code free ring. What does it do, Handy? It gives them a free ring. Get out of here. Those are like 60 bucks. Uh, no, they're free, Jason, at fantasychamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the show. The band is back together. Hey, oh, I don't have to click any bear sound buttons. Mike, are you back though for real? Is this a pump? Is this a pump? Is this a pump fake? I look, I I don't know, man. (laughs) (laughs) The way my life's been going last few days, I could be at home right now, and this is all just a dream. (laughs) So you've been kind of sick. Oh, I've not just been sick, my friend. I've been voyaging through the astral plane. I have seen the alternate dimensions. Now we get. I've I've seen this the criticism on YouTube of uh, as though. We don't know how to stay well. But I have I have seen the tweets. Like, you know what you I'm get, saying? Like you, you get sick a lot. Have a have a lozenge. Uh, vi- do they not make vitamin C in Arizona? We have we each have three kids, and they're all evil. Oh, yeah. and they're dirty, dirty little cesspools rats. of disease. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm going. I I'll be in New York this weekend on a family vacation. I am petrified right now, sitting next to Mike. No, I'm like, you should be. I need to switch seats. You with You should Andy. be. And look, uh, here's why, a- Jason? <laughs> Get this man a mask. <laughs> oh man, welcome in. It's a fun show today. We've got the Footy Award nominations on the show today. Here's a little prequel to that. Go to FootyAwards.com and vote. The nominations they came out today. The results will be on Thursday's episode, the official winners mm. on Thursday's show. Determined by you, the Foot Clan. You get to vote on all of this and see who wins. Some say the most prestigious sports awards that, w- that possible. We, that I, we know about. I know three people that say that. Yeah. At and least. I know at least four. If you're on YouTube, you can see the uh, beautifully blacksmithed uh, award. This thing is a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> if Mike comes too close, you can jab him. Right in the eye with that. That's this, this is literally like a knife blade. This yeah. is I could well, I, could, a, I a, could use this to cut my steak. A blacksmith made it. Well, good job. Shout, Shout out the, to R.L. Scott. But the Footy Award nominations they're kind of fun because we get to reflect on the season and talk about uh, the good and the bad and the ugly, and we'll do a little bit of that for Week 17 as well on today's show. I'm looking at the show doc. I see the grinning bearded mug of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. man! Like, as as, as uh, I feel like me and Ryan Fitzpatrick this year, we uh, we really meshed. We really came together. Last year, I was him for Halloween. Maybe that was the turning point. I think it was where you guys uh, had a breakthrough. We became like one person. Two becomes one, and <laughs> I was like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I knew, I knew, if, I knew months oh. ago that in the fantasy playoffs he was going to dominate. Now even the the most devout of Ryan Fitzpatrick truthers could not possibly have recommended, hey, if you're in a Week 17 championship, you should play him in Foxborough against the <laughs> Patriots because he's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, see, you cut your beard this year, though. He didn't do that. That's so no, his, he, he actually he did. He cut it on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, and he true. grew it, he all cuts the way it back. every Wednesday when you watch him on Sunday. Yeah. See, you, I thought that might be why you got sick, Mike. Oh, I lost my my Samson powers. <laughs> yeah, your hair was cut. 
But it was a heck of a weekend. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Just a bit of, uh, you know, if you're new to the show, we're a year-round podcast. So uh, we drop down to two shows a week from January through uh, July. And then we jump up to three and then we're five a, five a week from August through December. Just so you know what's going on around here. You can find us on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers and the websites, the fantasy footballers.com. Let's talk some rewind. Weekly rewind. All right. We've got the NFL playoffs on the docket. It was a fun weekend. It was um, exciting to, you know, think about the implications of Ryan Fitzpatrick's magic. Yes. And, He's a buy thief. Did you that, see I mean, Andy Reid? He stole. Well, he's no, like, what did Reid on the sideline? No, no, Andy Reid at, at in, during the press conference. Oh no, I oh, did not see this. This has to and be he good. gave well, he gave a hail to the Dolphins. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know that was quite the scene to be honest, because that touchdown pass happened with five or six minutes left in that Chiefs game, and the crowd at Arrowhead going absolutely insane. Kevin Harlan Dude, with the call. Kevin Harlan. Freaking goat, man. Yeah. That, that dude was handling business. He was calling two games at the exact same time, he, and it made sense. Yeah, it was spectacular. And the guy, you know, the Chiefs on the sideline, Andy Reid, you could see a little uh, mustached smirk, oh, yeah. smirk on it the sideline. It was quivering. And, uh, you know, it's just so strange to have. I never, ever want you ever again to put the picture of Andy Reeves' quivering mustache in my head <laughs> ever again. That is a new rule. Oh. Okay, Mike. Uh, Mike. Ryan Fitzpatrick did it. Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick put well, it in your mouth. That makes sense. So now we've got Bills uh, in Houston taking on the Texans, Titans taking on the Patriots in Foxborough. That game, that's going to be an interesting game. Yeah. Uh, you know, New England, their defense couldn't stop the Dolphins towards the end of that game. And because Devontae Parker's unstoppable now. He's a really, really good player. In Who's fact, better, Devontae Parker or A.J. Brown? Oof, Parker right now. But I think that those are two. They're both pretty unstoppable right now. I saw a poll on Twitter, and it was which Devontae do you want? It was Devontae Adams or Devontae Parker oh, for yeah, next I, year. And I look, recency bias must have tainted the results, but it was like like Parker was winning this that, poll. That's dumb. Well, hold on. Is Fitzpatrick back? Uh, I, I think he should be back, by the way. Well, then you got to take Parker. I think Parker would be a much better play than. Uh, I'm joking. These are jokes, Foot Is it? Yes, that's. A, you're telling me that you would rather okay, have okay. Devontae Parker based on uh, 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 what a ten to twelve week sample once once Ryan Fitzpatrick took over, um, than having uh, Devontae Adams with a four year sample of being, you know, a, a good you're, fantasy. You're talking about sub one thousand yard receiver. I'm talking by the about way, he only, which he did. He did again. Guy. By the way, he's under a thousand for this year. That's what I was joking. The about. the Packers are the Packers are a different team than they used to be. If the template was exactly the same, you're telling me you would draft Devontae Adams if everything was the same on both of those teams? Yeah, I still would. Oh, that all right. All right. I would. I mean, Parker is going to be see that. A, that's the problem. Very high pick. That's the problem with the off season evaluating Packers for 2020. Everybody wants to, you know ascribe them as a top offense but they're not anymore so you i think you're forgetting that you know Devonte adams was was injured i'm not forgetting and, that he was injured i mean his pace is 1329 yards and 111 reception he, like he he wasn't bad he was just out during the times you needed him the most i'm i'm making an argument for the sake of saying more more giving praise to Devonte parker for the fact that he wasn't just kind of a good receiver he was like the best receiver in fantasy from like week four yeah. on or, or at the top behind Michael Thomas. So he deserves um, – it, it'd just be interesting. If I'm the Dolphins with 15 draft picks and ending up not – you know, you're not drafting Joe Burrow, which means, okay, maybe with those 15, maybe you end up taking a shot on Tua later or whatever. Oh, I, I feel like Ryan Fitzpatrick is maybe the best option for your team next year. Is that crazy? No. No, no, not for for what they're doing. Then I I don't think that it's a stupid thing to go back to Fitzpatrick. Just take another year, see what Fitz Magic can do. I mean, 
I mean, I mean if you're trusting the just, process, it's it. The process should be developing a quarterback next year, as opposed to Fitzpatrick coming back with 15 picks. You win more games, and then you don't have a high draft pick for a quarterback, and then you're in a, a pick. Yeah, it, it's possible. I like the process though of uh, where you like the entire team is ready, and then you just then you slide in that rookie quarterback on his rookie contract, and you like that's how you build the Seahawks. Yeah. It is. Like that's that's how they became who they were. The team was ready and then Russell Wilson was a a gem in the draft and then they were a, almost a dynasty. Ravens and Chiefs ended up with the buys, so uh they're not playing this next weekend. Vikings heading to New Orleans to take that on the Saints. That game is going to be crazy. The Vikings Saints yes. game. And then Seahawks at Eagles. The Super Bowl champion Eagles. <laughs> uh, is have you ever seen a team more injured? No, the Eagles. I mean, they on, are just beat up on offense. I don't. I mean, it is our profession to know all of these players, and I don't know who are these guys because I, I'll, I'll confess, I don't know practice squad players that well. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Kimsky on Twitter summarized their I situation. I thought that was one of the wide receivers. Me, me too. No. <laughs> I just assumed. Okay, what, is, what was his stat line? Uh, he he's with Miles Sanders going out with the ankle injury. They were without their wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, tight end one, running back one, running back two, and right tackle for the rest of that game. Mm -hmm. That's nice. how Boston Scott ended up and they won. on the field, and they won the game, and they're in the playoffs, and the Cowboys aren't, Brooks. How's that feel? Yeah. Pretty, pretty bad? Yeah. And what a honest, weird year. Like, for the Eagles, this was – them getting the Seahawks is the best draw that they could have gotten. I agree. Gotten. Like if if they had the Vikings, so I would have give me the Vikings. That that one's an easy pick. If they had, if it had been the Forty ers you know what's strange though, Mike, is that if the Seahawks win last night, they play the Vikings. So no, if if the Seahawks had won last night, they would have had a bye. They no, I don't. I no, don't. They, they would have had. No, true. they would have had the Vikings. Because, they would not have had a bye. Yeah, because, oh, because the Packers won. Yeah, because exactly. the okay, Packers won. Okay. So. To me, this game's coming down to the wire, and I know what it meant for San Francisco. It meant everything for them. Your odds of making the Super Bowl, the bye week, all of that stuff. But I was like, if I'm the Seahawks, don't I want to play Philadelphia instead of Minnesota? For sure. So losing was better? Mm, uh, maybe. Yeah, that that's kind of where I was when I saw those scenarios. I'm like... Because I mean, you're on the road. Yeah. I'd rather be at home. Yeah. Well, all right. Miles Sanders did exit week 17 with an ankle injury. He was looking good. He's got an MRI today, but um, I think they're optimistic he'll be okay. Zach Ertz dealing with a lacerated kidney and rib problems. That's why he didn't play. Ooh, the, the old Keenan Allen. Yeah, they're still hoping he's available for week one of the playoffs. That's that's tough. We'll see. Now, I missed it, but what happened with Jordan Howard? In the game? Yeah. Like, why? Because he, he was supposed to be back, and yeah. they let Jay Ajayi go, but uh, ended up being the Boston Scott show on his three touchdowns. So it just worked better for what the offense was doing. The game, it seemed like neither team wanted to win that division <laughs> for a little bit, but Jordan Howard didn't get any snaps. Yeah. So um, looking forward, Kenny Galladay, concussion in week 17. Mm -hmm. Head coaches fired. Freddie Kitchens, farewell. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Congratulations, Browns fans. It, this was I, a, I think Freddie Kitchens was a, a horrible head coach, and so I, I think this was the right move. Pat Shermer, fired. But you know who wasn't? Dave it's Gettleman. It's me. It's me, David Gettleman. <laughs> to me, David Gettleman doesn't deserve to be fired. I agree. I mean, he Daniel Jones looks like a great pick. I was kind of surprised that Pat got fired. Me too. That one actually I feel like it was because – of that last game where it's like the Eagles lose everybody and you, they just trounce you in the fourth quarter. It's like, okay, I can't yeah, I like Pat Shermer. So. I do too. Um, Ron Rivera expected to get the Redskins head coaching job. Do you like that hire? I do. I, I personally think Ron Rivera is a good coach. He took over a team that was like a, a two-win Panthers team, ended up you know, with plenty of division titles, went to a Super Bowl. Um, you know, he wasn't always the most winningest coach, but I, I, I like him. And when you hear players, current and former, talk about him, no one ever says anything about Ron Rivera other than Positive, what an yeah. amazing man and coach he was for them. Yeah, yeah, they they made a change in Josh, Carolina. 
Josh Norman was saying he's you know if that happens he's he's you know he was asked like do you think it's going to be different he goes everything you see is going to be different that, that he's just playing for his job sure I was going to say he is he saying that from like the the stands because I'm not sure he's back in Washington <laughs> that was the please yeah uh, we hey, Ron you remember me buddy. <laughs> I was really good. Remember? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Weekly Rewind News and Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right. We we have some truth episodes coming up after our footy awards. Breaking down, you know, the big picture. Did players actually help you or are you going to be blinded by their fantasy finishes simply because of total points over the course of the year. Good example would have been Devontae Adams. Like you said, you know, you look at the end of year finish. Does that end up uh, muddying their draft position? Does week 17 end up muddying their draft position because it, you know, pushes them forward into a fantasy finish that, you know, wasn't reflective of the season and how they helped fantasy owners. I'm curious when we talk through the studs, the stinkers today, did anybody do something in week 17 here that, we need to pay attention to in that vein. Studs wise, uh, Dak was great. Three hundred three. Yeah, he was back. Four. Jared Goff. Three nineteen and three. Fitzpatrick. We talked about him. Drew Brees. Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick and Gardner Minshew were the big surprises of the of the week for me. I the fact that Jacksonville bounced back and Gardner came out and threw almost three hundred and three against Indy was that was a sensational performance. It'll be it. Is Gardner starting next year for the Jaguars? I would say high probability, yeah. But they have to you know, decide what they're doing with with Nick Foles. With their is, head coaching position, uh, too, because Marone is going to be relieved of duties. Man, that, the, Which the is, NFL is – look, that's a tough place to work. <laughs> I was surprised they told them beforehand. Like that's It must have I been mean. a really casual conversation. This was not like a, hey, Doug, you're fired. This was like, hey, here's what we're thinking. How do you – how do you feel about coaching that last game and then scooching on out of town? And he's like, I got nothing to do. Yeah. Why don't I go out? Well, and, okay. Why don't I go out and put my best foot forward and get an offense or defensive coordinator position somewhere else? Yeah. Now go win the game. <laughs> and he did. Uh, Derrick Henry's good. 32 for 2, 11 and 3. Wins the NFL rushing title. I, While not playing one of those weeks. Yeah, I was. I posted a very arbitrary, mostly purposeless, unhelpful top ten for next year. Nice. Starting right now. The best kind. The best kind. I reserve my right to change my mind on everybody. But Derrick Henry, if they bring him back, and they bring back Tannehill, if they holy Derrick Henry. I mean, just yeah, unbelievable. He, he's Tannehill's been a monster. The, Tannehill is the linchpin of that situation, though, for me. But there, there are a lot of, like, when you look towards 2020 and those players, there are a lot of those, like, linchpin situations Yeah. with, uh, you know, like Nick Chubb in Cleveland and whether they have Kareem Hunt there or not and, you know, what the offense is looking like. Like, that changes a player's ranking significantly. Um, and then, obviously, Henry having – if you put him in the exact same situation, this is a – this is just a monster season. Everything yeah. you ever hoped for from Derrick Henry and everything you thought you could never have. Think about where we were mentally with Derrick Henry and Devontae Parker mm, right. for years. Like, is this going to be a problem for us because we're now going to read Derrick Henry career arcs into other running backs or Devontae Parker career arcs into other wide receivers? I think it's, I think it's rare with Henry because Henry came in and was behind a star. You know, De DeMarco Murray was – you know, sure. the guy where it, was, it wasn't like Derrick Henry was bad, whereas Devontae Parker was just bad. He yeah. just wasn't good forever, and then all of a sudden the the light went on, and he's now a great wide receiver. Yeah, and Brashad Perryman's like, I'm good too. Yes, that dude earned a lot of money these last couple of weeks. Boston Scott, three touchdowns, 84 yards receiving. That dude's and built. That dude is built, by the way, and the, that ridiculous the, spin move. The spin move was incredible. Yeah, like the jokes were flying around about how it looked like when you're playing Madden and you just accidentally hit the wrong button and then you just spin. Did you not see his tweet about oh, it? Oh, I, I did. He actually addressed it and he talked about like the Wi-Fi was lagging. Sorry about the spin move. Wi-Fi made the game lag. <laughs> That's great. That's a great tweet. Uh, Joe Mixon had an absolutely monster game once again. He's a really good player. Yes. And if you take, you know, 
their team should get – I mean, they've got – Pretty much nowhere to go but up at this point. You know? Well, they already drafted Burrow. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, He's on his way to Cincinnati right now. <laughs> you know, the offensive line. Picking out line, apartments. Yes. The offensive line that was so bad. You know, it's it's one of those situations where th- it should be a better year next year than this year for, for Joe I Mixon. Just, I just love the talents of Joe Mixon. I can't get enough. He's going to be very, very good. So where, where, does it, where does it stop? Where was he in your top ten? It wasn't in it yet. Really? Yeah, I want to see what happens there. But I feel like Mixon's an easy top 10 pick. I told everybody on Twitter, whoever I left out is pencil them in at 11 and 12 on yeah. the rankings. Whoever I left out, that's exactly where I have them. No, Mixon, you know, the Chubb situation, that's where it's right on the line there for me. But, Got you. Um, Damian Williams? Yes. Insert mic thoughts. That's There's a sunglasses icon here in the show doc. Mm-hmm. You can hear them. I don't even need to speak them. No, there's Nothing like week 17 no, I was gonna for say, a victory lap that's here. exactly what I was going to say, man. Just when it mattered the least. <laughs> just Speaking of mattering the least, Mike Boone, thanks a lot. Oh, my goodness. What a double bird move Mike, Byrne, Mike Boone just <laughs> Mike pulled. Mike Bird. <laughs> Mike Bird. That's his double new bird. name. Because everyone played Mike Boone in week 16 championships because he looked good in a short stint in week 15 when he was the guy and then he, against a very vulnerable Packer defense and, and now he plays the Bears and oh, goes for 17 148 and one. Oh my goodness well they, that's what analysts saw and yep. that's why people said he could be uh, uh, I think I said he could be a championship winner and I was not wrong because there are people playing in week 17 oh but did gosh. they play Boone? Probably Someone not. Someone did. Send me that screenshot. Mostert with two more touchdowns, six games in a row, Raheem Mostert into the end zone. It's freaking ridiculous, man. And nobody else really got work or was productive in that game. Uh, he only had 10 carries. That's For, all he needs. Yeah, it's an efficiency thing with Raheem Mostert. Marlon Mack, your start of the week, two touchdowns, 77 yards on the ground. We'll see where that team heads next year. That'll be interesting. Yes, what do they do at the quarterback position? Michael Gallup decided to score thrice. Whew. Three times to finish the year. If you think that that will affect his end of season ranking quite a bit, you are right. <laughs> that is a really, really impressive Week 17 stat line. What do fantasy owners do with Michael Gallup? Because you're in a situation here where Cooper's not under contract. You don't know the head coach right now. I mean. Sure you do. It's lifer. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I... I Part of me is surprised. Let me Garrett, refresh the uh, the internet real quick and see if he's been fired. Yet. I want I wanted to say that I'm surprised Garrett hasn't been fired, but then I realized by the time people are listening to this, he very well has. He could, and then I realized he will never, ever be fi- this. He he's will have forever. the job for another 15 years. He will be fired and just show back up, the, he, like it never happened. Like if you look at this team and what they, you know, they're going to have to do to pay Dak. It seems crazy for them not to bring back more weapons. Like, reduce his – pay Dak and reduce his weapons. I like Gallup, but I can't imagine he's the one next year without Cooper alongside him. I think Jerry Jones has to fight. Like, public has – you know, the pitchforks and Garrett has to be fired. So, he's going to fire him, and then he's going to hire Mason Ferret. <laughs> Mason and he'll come Ferret? In, he'll come in, and he'll be That's totally – just fellow. him in a wig. <laughs> Oh, I see what you mean. Mason Ferret. Yeah. Goodness, it took me we'll, a second. We'll recognize him from the clapping. We'll see right through it. Uh, Debo Samuel. Is Debo Samuel the wide receiver one yes. in San Francisco? Yes. He's, Is he's, he a somebody that's a sleeper for next year's drafts? I don't – I mean, it, it'll, it's too early to tell how many uh, people will be on board to where it ruins his sleeper status, but he is the one. Emmanuel Sanders is only getting older. And, San, and Sanders isn't under contract. No, he's not. So I imagine Debo is. Yeah. You'll be talking about Debo and draft picks and Jalen Hurd coming back and things like that in San Francisco. Brashad Perryman, 5 for 134 and 1. Get on paid, eight, man. eight targets, getting money. A.J. Brown breaks 1,000 yards on the season, four for 124 and one. He, one where, of my favorite players coming out of this draft that I thought would be handicapped in, and he was. forever with Marcus Mariota. When he was drafted by the Titans, it was just, well, that stinks because he was one of our favorites, and now he has no fantasy relevance. 
Tannehill takes over, and he is a top 10 wide receiver from that point on. It'll be very interesting where he gets drafted next year. You're going to have to pay up. Like, he's not falling right. in drafts. You're going to have to pay. And if he if he just continues, you know, to to thrive, you're going to be happy with it. But it's, it's a risk. And I saw the stat. I wish I could credit who it was. I apologize. I don't remember because this is just the, the Twitter timeline. But he is the first wide receiver – to break a thousand yards with under ninety targets, yeah, I mean, he's just a dyna. He has also had, I think, four touchdowns of more than fifty yards, which is the most in the NFL. Like dynamic, twenty yards per player. reception, man. Yeah, he's and he he's it's a beast. Humongous. He's a, he's a Nobody tank. can tackle him. These DBs cannot tackle that Such guy. Such a good player. They just can't. Literally, they can't get their arms around him. It's like, but that just goes to show that. They have to link hands. Yes. That's got, it's got to be a full red tackle. rover situation. It, it does say something about specifically like A.J. Brown, uh, maybe even Hollywood Brown, where when we're prognosticating in the offseason, when we're looking forward, and all we have is backwards to rely on, just to leave a little bit of, of wiggle room and margin, even the Debo Samuel situation, because you have so much turnover in the NFL offensively, and, you know, I think Debo got undervalued a little bit because there were multiple rookies drafted there. Same thing in Baltimore with Hollywood Brown and Miles Boykin. Um, same thing in Washington. Undervalued Terry McLaurin because, you know, they also drafted uh, Harmon. So I think talent matters a well, lot. Talent and draft stock. Yeah, and Maybe. those are three teams. Baltimore, their passing game last year, not good. Washington, couldn't see it being good. Titans? No, not good. Both all three of those players made fantasy impacts this year, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Hunter Renfro. He's really interesting too. He's this, been great. Is it, that's back to back hundred yard games for him, right? Since since having the the punctured lung, it's all he needed. And before the punctured lung, he was coming on. He had too strong. much air. Too much. Yeah, I mean, even before he missed those games, six receptions, four, five. Finishes the year with seven and six and over a hundred, like you said, a touchdown in each game. Uh, he's just a pretty good player, pretty good player, and showing what he did in college. Uh, Robert Woods, Devontae Adams, Dede Westbrook, uh, Keenan Allen came through with a big week. Thanks, Keenan. Jerk. Do you see the uh, Jason? Did you have any compassion on old Phil? Did you Did you get to see his? Press conference, Philip Rivers. I did. Oh, you know, I did see his some of his tear-filled, yeah, uh, leadership. Um, yeah, I look as a human. I'm sure he's great, but no, I had no no love lost. No, he did not win me well, over. No empathy given. Okay, all right, just just seeing where you were. No. He says he's got he's got nine kids. He's got to play next year. <laughs> so. Oh man, if I had nine kids, I would never retire. <laughs> Are they, honey, are they raised yet? Yeah. No, I'm going back to work. Um, tight end. Oh, my goodness. Tyler Higby. What do you do with Tyler Higby? He's a top 10 tight end next year. 100%. He's 100. got the contract to back up the stat line. You draft him to be what he has been the second half of this year. I mean, he he is a weapon they have figured out how to use, and I don't think that's just going to disappear. They're not going to be like, you know, that really worked, but. Well, yeah. to be fair, they had a weapon that they figured out how to use, and he disappeared. No, he was usurped. I'm talking about Brandon Cooks. Oh, I thought you were talking about Gerald Everett. No, that's what I thought. No, he was I'm talking about. about Brandon Cooks. They're both examples. Who, they should be Brandon both, Cooks? Poof, he's they should gone. Both be examples of what can happen when their team needs to adjust. Because it, Higby could go that same direction as those two players, but you know, if you want to be really stupid. You can give the 16-game pace from week 13 on. That's 100, 138 re receptions, oh my. 1,670 yards, six touchdowns. But he was given a multi-year deal. Um, he's had, what, five consecutive games of great fantasy value. Will be very interesting. The question that Brooks put in here is, will he be drafted as a top five tight end? No. No, no I won't. don't think so. There's there's too many uh, bigger names above him. you got the top three. You've got, you know, I would take Jared Cook. Uh, b based on the offense and you he know, his be. history, I don't think he gets top five. Uh, uh, Hunter Henry and 
uh, Austin Hooper. There, there's there's going to be yeah Evan Ingram will be yeah. talked about again those players. But Dan Arnold, the postman, oh, yeah, four he, for seventy six and a touchdown. He will delivers. be he will be back next year in Arizona, and Kyler Murray likes him. And I just want to remember that you know oh, his I, name is being mentioned on December thirtieth of twenty nineteen. You're darn right it is because Dan Arnold is a big man, and they used him to perfection over the last few weeks. This time of year, there is so much mail being delivered that they had to bring in the postman. I can't believe he had time. Like he had, he had all those packages he had to deliver. Well, I did and, mail doesn't come on Sundays, Mike. Oh, oh. very nice. Yeah. That, he's like a superhero. Yeah. Goes right back to the postman job Monday just, through Friday. Just but shows the, up based on, on whatever his waiver contract was. He needs that postman I, I job. I think the Clark Kent in this situation is the NFL player. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm I'm just a regular NFL player. Don't mind me. <laughs> He's a super postman. The, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting take. <laughs> Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right. You won't have to wait much longer. We've got the uh, the footy nominees very, very soon. But some stinkers for week 17. Patrick Mahomes, nothing impressive in that game at all. You know, you just can't get in the way of Damian Williams. You've got You're to let right, him you can't. He's a beast. do his thing. Uh, Chargers helped as well. <laughs> Jimmy G. It's weird for Jimmy G to be here. He had because a freaking great game. He played very well. 18 for 22 is great. 285 yards. That's fine. No interceptions, great. But then when you don't throw touchdowns and you don't run the ball for fantasy purposes, you worthless. Yeah, it was it was very unfortunate because it was just it was gimmies, gimmies for Mostert. Josh Allen, huge stinker oh, this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, on the bench, nothing yeah. from the bench. I think he had five passes. Deshaun attempts. Watson, nothing. Oh man, what a what a backup he was. Yeah. Uh, running back stinkers, Nick Chubb ending the year on a sour note w over the last two weeks. It's hard to care about stat lines in Cleveland with their, you know, the demise of Freddie Kitchens, the injury to Odell. It was a good week for Baker. So Chubb, we'll see what happens next year. He carried a lot of fantasy owners for the majority of the year. Cream Hunt didn't do anything either. Philip Lindsay, that was a huge stank. What's insane on my record? Well. He became the first undrafted running back to rush for a thousand yards of back to back seasons. <laughs> like the dude had a thousand yard season on, on that team. And it feels yeah. like he helped your fantasy team twice. Yeah. And yeah, you it's just, not good. You just kept playing him and he was a thousand yard rusher. You know how like we always say pay attention to the film. You know what I mean? Make sure that the stat lines match up with the what you see on the field. Is this a talented player? Is this an AJ Brown? You could see he was just outlandishly good. Well, he is. But I Philip mean, Lindsay, Philip Lindsay is like the opposite. Philip Lindsay is like, please, when you make your decision, cover your eyes because he always see. He's just got that jitterbug. Legs always moving. Tries as hard as he can on every play, but for fantasy purposes, believing in that has not helped you. Last year, he was, I believe, the running back twelve. He was, he was, uh, you know, the last one to make it in as an RB one. He had a thousand thirty-seven uh, rushing yards and nine touchdowns. This yeah, year, he had a thousand eleven and seven. I mean, it was, it was not that different, but the way they came did not help fantasy owners. Fun. All right, wide receivers, Michael Thomas, Julian Edelman, DJ Chark, Tyler Boyd. Chark just couldn't get it done uh, towards the end of the year. You wonder how healthy he was or, you know, if this was just some regression from the first half. But the last two games of the year, he did not look himself. No big plays, just four for 34. And uh, not good, not good. And then Tyler Boyd. Coming down off of last week's yeah. number one overall performance, Juju. Oof. Juju finished the year as the wide receiver 65. I watched that game for the purposes of watching Juju Smith-Schuster try to get off the ball, try to um, find some separation. I don't know you know, how much of it is duck or whatever the case may be. He didn't seem to have a lot of separation in this game. It, he's the most, like the far and away to me, the number one most uh the biggest question yeah biggest question going forward because it's a what do you believe you know do do you think that it was because of the injuries to both him and to big ben uh do you think that you know the offense is going to drastically change and or or do you think juju is what you know 
he looked to be a wide receiver one with Big Ben as the wide receiver two, young up and coming superstar. I think that next year there won't be a lot of in between. People will be either in or out, and you know his average draft position is going to be really dumb because it's gonna whatever round it is. You know, it's, right. it, it's well, like let's say Big Ben is back. Do you think you're going to be you're going to be staring down like Juju or Odell Beckham? And what do you believe about either player next right. year? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Multiple years of kind of disappointment with OBJ, but all that talent. You saw another great catch this weekend, and then Juju. You you've got the proof in the pudding that first year, but you also had Antonio Brown on the other side, stealing coverage away, letting him eat up the inside of the field. So what the truth is, I don't know. I don't know what that is with who would, Juju. Who would you draft right now? Beckham. I would I would draft Juju. Yeah, I would take Beckham, no doubt. Are you are you pretty definitive on your Juju? I I don't think it's as definitive as you know my my coming into this year love for Juju was, but I I still am a believer in the talent. Yeah, I mean it, it's funny Odell obviously had a very frustrating season for fantasy owners. He still ended up over a thousand yards, over seventy receptions on this down year, but we'll see. He's going to have surgery too, I imagine. Kelsey Hooper Fant. Yay. Hooper, I mean, seven receptions on nine targets. Yeah, PPR. Getting back to that, that's fine. That's fine. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. No more stinkers to talk about. Well, maybe sort of, but you guys ready for these nominations? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Do Let's it. do it. It's time. The 2019 Footy Awards. Illustrious, amazing, incredible. Best theme song ever. I never want to stop it. I know the fade out is too hard. Don't know. Don't you dare fade this out. <laughs> it is a 23 minute song. How many categories do we have, Judge Giamatti? 15. 15 categories. Oh. See, I know. I looked at whether I could uh, jerry-rig this to just run behind for the whole show, Mike, but that's really on you. That's your department, and you've been uh, in a in a fevered... Am I here? Dystopian <laughs> life. It's not been good. Now, we understand you uh, You now understand and interpret all of Sammy Watkins' revelations. Oh, yes. Or at least during that three, yes. three days of fever. Yes, my third eye <laughs> and his like fifth eye... <laughs> we we met okay. somewhere between Jupiter and Saturn. <laughs> they all make sense yes. now. It's, I got it, man. Do you understand what he's doing on the yeah. field now? Oh, totally. The long play? Yes. Well, okay. speaking of it Sammy. Will, it will reveal itself. All right. Performance of the year is the first category. Footyawards.com. Head to footyawards.com. Vote for your winners. They will be announced on Thursday. By the way, no show tomorrow. No show Wednesday on New Year's Day. But the Footy Award show on Thursday. Make sure you tune in. Performance of the year nominees. Last year, the winner was Derrick Henry. Oh, my goodness. He had that week 14 week against Jacksonville, that 17 for 238 and four that we all just <laughs> couldn't believe. And then that translated into, what's he going to do next year? And uh, the answer was continue. All right, the nominees. Drew Brees, week 14 against San Francisco, 349 and five plus a rushing touchdown, 40 fantasy points. Mm. Jameis Winston in week 14. Oh, he was so helpful for our yeah, fantasy. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was. 456 and four with a rushing touchdown as well, 34 fantasy points. He helped us beat Lamar Jackson, the impossible. And Lamar, that week 15 performance, 212 passing yards, five touchdowns, and 86 rushing yards. I, I love that one of the performances of the year – is on the back of 15 completions. Yeah. That's all you need. Saquon Barkley, week 16 at Washington, 22 for 189 and 1. Don't vote for the Don't vote for that. 4 for 90 and 1 on four targets. 40 fantasy points. Yeah, people are going to be really strong. If you were in a championship game with or against Saquon, you have opinions on that one. Saquon. I am very against that. Yes, as am I. Saquon is my number 2 for next year. I saw that. Yeah. Kenyon Drake, week 15 against Cleveland. This is a uh, one that will live forever, 137-4. and four. He won people championships on the basis of this game because not only did he get you to the championship with that game, 
but because of how dominating it was, you played him in, in the championship where he showed up, had a good game. And in the most Sammy Watkins fashion ever, Sammy Watkins. Oh, 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 my brother. He went nine for 198 and three <laughs> in week one. He was started in just 35% of leagues that week. And he never showed up again you know for 15 more weeks. You know who started him? This guy. And it was awesome. Oh, man. That's that is, so Sammy. Talk about a performance of the year. Look <laughs> the, what I yes, can do. the only one. It, it was his only performance of the year. <laughs> yeah. Like, like Christian McCaffrey is missing on this list because his performance of the year was every week. It's like, pick one. It's very easy to pick a performance of the year for Sammy Watkins. Uh, let's go with uh, that one. That's right. So those are the nominations. Footyawards.com. Vote for that. We've got 14 more categories. That was almost 30% of his yards. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the the statistics they just keep adding up for him. All right, what's the second uh, second Our category? Our second category, it's an Andy Holloway special. This is the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, which player's painful injury hurt fantasy owners the most. Last year's winner, Leonard Fournette. Oh, hey, yeah, good yeah. to see he could get over that though. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly. Your nominees are we have James Conner. <sighs> Finished as the running back 32, missed basically the second half of the season. Carry on Johnson. Ugh, Jason. Got back at the end of the he season. He did. He did. You could have played him, and he had an okay game. Yeah. Uh, Adam Thielen Ugh. was the wide receiver 11 off of draft boards and has been useless since, <laughs> since week eight. And then, how dare you, but Damian Williams... Look, Mike, if, don't say how dare you because that's the only thing you have to protect you for the season is yeah. his injury. You, you want should him be, to be the injured man. You should man be of the happy about Although, that. Although, which one do you want to be injured more, as Damian Williams or James Conner? Yeah, which of those two guys that you love are you more happy that you can use the injury as an excuse for the season? Find out on Thursday <laughs> that's when very the nominations true. come in. All right, number three, it's only appropriate I read this. It's the poopiest pants award despite high expectations. This player let down fantasy over owners over and over and over again. Basically, who was who was the biggest bust? Last year it was Rob Gronkowski drafted yeah, high. It was that's terrible. Stunk. You have Odell Beckham. Yep. He was drafted as the wide receiver five, finished wide receiver twenty six. You have the aforementioned James Conner. The running back six was where he was drafted. Lev Bell right behind them was drafted as the running back seven. Both of those guys disappointed, obviously. You have David Johnson. Oh, flush it down. Got that's, off to a that's strong start. what the Cardinals are doing. Yeah. yeah that's, I mean, this is tough, man. Well, I, I get it. He finished as the running back 38. But he. how many weeks in a row did he have where he was great? The first, I think it was like the first five weeks he was fine. And then he basically was not zero in the NFL. As a, zero as a runner. None. That's true. I mean, basically just – Still, f for fantasy, I know. I'm standing up here for David Johnson being in this and, category. And uh, then finally, Juju Smith-Schuster, the injury-riddled yeah. uh, Steeler offenseless team, drafted as the wide receiver six, finished wide receiver 65. Not good. Yeah. That's going to be very difficult for people to – I bet those are all very even. I could see an argument for, you know, David Johnson taking the cake there, but on the other hand – you know, some of these other guys hurt you back half of the year. James See, Conner came back twice to destroy you in game. Yes. I think, to me, Odell Beckham is the guy that the whole first half of the year, you just kept playing him because he's, he's OBJ. You just kept doing it over over and over and over, just kept hurting you. Like Juju. You did Juju. that with Juju, too, though, for, for the first half of the year. Even though you lost Big Ben, you weren't abandoning your draft stock on Juju, so you just kept playing him and playing him I until he like gave up. I feel like Juju helped. His owners with his injuries. It's like, I'm, okay, I'm I'm out. You don't have to make that decision. Um, I, I I feel like many more people were playing Odell Beckham or James Conner than the end of the year playing David Johnson or Juju. But waiver wire wonder: Which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the 2019 season last year? It was George Kittle, the 2018 mm -hmm. winner. This one's going to be very interesting. Devontae Parker. Since week four was the wide receiver two, DJ Chark. From weeks one through 11, do, 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 do. he was the wide receiver five. Couple of Ryans. Ryan Tannehill and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, man, I don't know which one of 
want Fitzpatrick, to support more. Uh, yes, I, I know which one you want to support I'm more. just joking. Ryan Fitzpatrick from week seven on had six top seven quarterback finishes. Only Lamar Jackson had more. And then Darren Waller, six, uh, 90 catches and finished as the tight end three. I believe he was like 90, 1100. I mean, heck a of beast. a year for Waller. That was awesome. Number five. Fantasy wise, sorry, I lost my place here. <laughs> Still <laughs> coming back, Mike. Yeah, we're working on it. We'll get the kinks out. Number five, the fantasy wide receiver of the year. And the way we want you to vote on this, you got to factor in draft position, big game performances, impact to your fantasy teams. Who deserves the wide receiver footy of the year? This, Last this year's. is a sham category. You are there's probably a hold there's on, no hold one. on. There's three of them this year that are absolute sham categories. They're just such home run winners that it's clear. Uh, Fellas, you're go ahead ruining and, the award go, show. Go ahead and read the nominees. Well, last Mike. year's let's look at the past. Last year's winner, Devontae Adams. Sure, a sensational year. So this year, our nominees are Allen Robinson. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he had a very good year. He yeah. had to deal with with Mitch. Yeah, Kenny Galladay, the smooth, oh, man. so smooth, Mr. Kenny G. I don't even know if I have. Uh, I mean, he had to deal with his own crap. Oh, oh so smooth. Not dealing s- with not smooth at the quarterback position. Devonte Parker. Yeah, that that he, that would be worthwhile. Absolutely, he's deserving of this award. Hey, Chris Godwin. Chris Goblin himself yeah. had a monster breakout campaign. Julian Edelman and Michael Thomas. Okay, well. All right, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> 149 catches. Uh, <laughs> decent. All right, the fantasy running back of the year. Again, you're going to factor in draft cost and all of that. Yep. Uh, we've got Dalvin Cook had a good year. Aaron Jones oh, won yeah, a monster. lot. Of, won your son a championship, Andy. You had awesome Eckler who was tremendous value. I mean, if you are factoring in value in the draft, not many people. In fact, Austin Eckler was one of the most commonly owned players in championships. You had Derrick Henry, just an absolute beast once Tannehill took Where over. Where did Eckler finish? I want to say like 13. running back. No, no, I'm just playing. I, I just think playing it was running with back you. six. But. <laughs> I just wanted to mic, mic to think he lost the uh, bet. Running back five. Oh. That's, yeah, through 16, he was the running back five. Tremendous value there. Derrick Henry has been great. Ezekiel Elliott. One of the most consistent guys, never finished outside the top 24. And then Christian McCaffrey, who put up one of the largest fantasy seasons of all time. So those are lots of different nominees, each with their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. It's, not, it's not fair. It's okay. It's just, just what it is. Skip to now we know eight. who's number one next year. Fantasy tight end of the year. Same thing. Factor in your draft position, your big game performances, your impact to fantasy teams. Uh Travis. This one's tougher. Yes. Yes. I agree because you can you can vote for multiple guys for multiple reasons. Travis I, Kelsey? I have made my votes. I don't know if you guys have already voted. Oh, I, I, I have not. voted. I didn't know voting was open. This was well it wasn't, but uh, you know, perks of Ooh. perks of ownership. Um this one I had a hard time with. Travis Kelsey? You didn't have a hard time with running back of the year? I did not. <laughs> Mark Andrews, 3 uh, times he finishes the tight end one on the week. He finishes the tight end two on the year, and he had that my goodness late round ADP. Darren Waller. Oh, the Waller is. Oh. Times were times were great when Waller was yes. dominating week in and when week he was out. Eating. Yeah, and then Austin Hooper. I mean, this was the tight end one before the injury. Who was uh, a waiver wire guy? I mean, not many. Most leagues he wasn't drafted, but uh, either that or a super late draft pick. George Kittle, he busted just one time this entire year, was solid throughout. And Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, once again, a nominee for tight end of the year. All right, fantasy quarterback of the year. I'm getting the good categories here, fellas. (laughs) Uh, Which quarterback should be the quarterback of the year? Yeah. Deshaun Watson, Jameis Winston, Dak Prescott. The Ryans, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Tannehill. Maybe if we combine them, they could win this category. Can we do that? Oh, let's we do, try. We can do whatever we want. Ryan Fitzpatrick Hill. I this like one it. guy. Or Lamar Jackson. Hmm. Yeah, if he could win too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Okay, so we got we got another great category there. All right. Breakout this, player of the year. Which player was fantasy footballer? Uh, fantasy footballers. Fantasy football's breakout player. Was it Lamar Jackson, who obviously 
had a big breakout, or Aaron Jones, who finally came through for fantasy owners as they've been wanting. Derrick Henry getting it done all year. Chris Godwin, a true breakout. A lot of projections saying he was going to be the guy, and he actually was. Kenny Galladay finishing as, I believe, a top five wide receiver. Really? <clears throat> Is that right, Brooks? Wow. I think that's true. Pretty Brooks, sure. That. Uh, Devontae Parker. I, I mean, Number you want to talk? You want to talk a breakout? Uh, Devontae Parker yes. coming from he broke out of a maximum security prison. <laughs> the real is great that where break. Adam Gaze works? Uh, DJ Chark, <laughs> Cortland Sutton, and DJ Moore, a couple of young wide receivers, and then the tight end combo of Mark Andrews and Darren Waller, late round guys who we had hopes and they came through. And Patrick Mahomes was last year's winner. For that breakout. is true. That makes uh, sense. Rookie of the year category last year Ooh. was Saquon. This was a tough one. Yes. Because certain players came on at the end of the year, some were more consistent, different Does positions. Kyler win it? I'm not talking about the footy, which would be way better for Kyler if he could win he a footy. He cares more the, about the footy, but you're I've talking about told. the offensive yes. rookie of the year. I think the, Kyler wins it, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think he does. Josh Jacobs, A.J. Brown, Kyler Murray, Miles Sanders. Scary Terry McLaurin. Oh, come on. What? Oh, come on. Brooks. Brooks. I know we were supposed to vet these, but Brooks. Yeah, that's. David Mopportunity. He doesn't belong here. I want you to unnominate him before these. Strike him from listeners. the record. Actually, just add him, but cross do the, the strike through text on him. <laughs> okay. Just JK. <laughs> just DK Metcalf and then Debo Samuel. Mm. So, I, you know. I think there'll be some recency bias. Yeah, there, there certainly will. But, I mean, the truth is you can factor that in because recency bias helped win you championships. Yeah. You know, uh, to me, it's a three-horse. I horse, like recency. It's a three-horse race to me. I don't know if you guys. Jacobs, Kyler, A.J. Brown. Yep, those yeah. are the three. All right, uh, number 11, Mike. That's yours. The comeback player of the year. Which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance? On last year's winner. <sighs> Andrew Luck. Oof. That was last year's winner. Yeah. He, so we he's setting himself up for another footy yeah, he, in this category. He just wants comeback player of the year. We uh, give him this prestigious award. And that's all he needed. His, his career yeah, was complete. It was done. It was we over. Sh we should be careful when you're voting. Keep in mind, once players have their footy and it arrives in the mail, <laughs> they might retire. Yeah, just be aware they when, when they, you're voting. What else is there at that point? Nothing. So we got John Brown. Great who, year. Great year for the Buffalo Bills. Ryan Tannehill, once he stole that job away from well, he was probably given that job. <laughs> Marcus Mariota didn't do much to hold on to it. Or Allen Robinson. Man, this is tough. R Ryan it Tannehill, is. Allen Robinson, both of those guys had such a good, such a good year. And uh, a lot of people left them for dead. And John Brown was very consistent at the wide receiver position. If Even though he wasn't winning you weeks every week, he was very consistent. All right. This one is uh, the category that wins championships, the steal of the draft. Which player was the absolute best value in 2019 compared to where they were drafted? Amazingly, 2018's winner, James Conner. Not on this list this year. Yeah. Uh, all right. We have Lamar Jackson drafted uh, at, at, in the ninth round. Austin Eckler drafted in the sixth round. Again, finished as the running back five. Aaron Jones finishing as the running back two. And he was a third round draft pick. You have the wide receiver. 19 touchdowns. <clears throat> yeah, that's insane. That's ridiculous. Regression is coming. <laughs> uh, you have the wide receiver two, Chris Godwin who was drafted in the fourth round. Uh, Cortland Sutton, late round, double-digit draft guy, 10th round, finished as the wide receiver, 19. And Mark Andrews, one of the last tight ends you were picking in the 10th round, finished as the tight end, two. Mark Andrews made such a difference on teams, like Kittle did last year. Yep. Um, all right, are we into nickname of the year here? Let's do it. All right, this is always a fun one. Last year, I didn't even remember this. The winner of 2018 was apparently Mark Waltenberg. Oh, hey, it's me. You don't remember Mark, Mark Waltenberg? Mark I Waltenberg. think Mark Waltenberg should not be mentioned ever again. Probably oh. not. He's not a good dude. He's not a good dude. Say hi to the warden for me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Not good. Oh, no. Let's move into the, oh. the nominees 
for nickname of the year, Darren the Walrus. You've got. You can stop the list. The Lizard King. Oh! oh. <laughs> My cold blooded brother. You've got Chris Goblin made his debut on the uh, on the show and then showed up on Halloween. He did. Uh, Jacob Hollister, his nickname was Amber Crombie. Mm. He made the list? Apparently. Oh, but yeah. Oh, it's great. It's- oh, and this one, is this good? Is this bad? I mean, he, he was one of the bigger nicknames of the year. David. Um, opportunity, yeah, flopportunity, yeah. Montgomery. Yeah. Um, apparently, this made the list as well. Yeah, you're right. Kenny Bills. Kenny, we, we, your opportunity was so strong, man. It was right there. Yeah, the Foot Clan could have made you something special if yes. you came through, but you got you, didn't. you got. The, it just needed one game. The double nickname for T.J. Hawkinson. <laughs> Hockey Lees or the Hawk Strap, depending on how he performed, a.k.a. the Hawk Strap. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Did he Hockey Lees more than once? Yeah. Uh, yeah no, had- no, no. Not no. a Hockey Lees performance more than once. Really? I thought he had a couple big games. Am I wrong? I will vet. Uh, awesome Eckler, which I like. I think, yes. it's, you know, it's, 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 it's subtle. Yeah. And then uh, apparently at the end of the year, Jared Kuyuk. Jared Kuyuk. <laughs> Jared Kuyuk. Jared Kuyuk. Made, made his debut. <laughs> So dumb. Here's the thing. Sometimes so players, sometimes Jerk. players nicknames like Russell Wilson. It's so simple and it's basically his name. Those don't go anywhere. They don't disappear. You're for ten In other years words, old. they are not free of Jared Q. Exactly. Yeah, Jared Q will be back next year. All right, Mike, you you want to hit the uh you want to walk through the moment of the year with me? All right. So the, the I mean this, this is, is the last one. This is the big one. And the best part is that we get to win it every single year. Uh, so this the, is the fantasy footballers moment of the year. Yes. From 2019, last year's winner. Oh, it was so good. Was the accidental funky news drop. Uh, if you are around for that, that gem of a moment, it really was. That might be the best moment of all time. Of the show. Of yeah, the show. When we accidentally played the wrong news. It got funky. We rolled with it. So when we're... Are we giving people links to the video, or are we just trying to our Bro- best to explain are, Brooks, those break are it down for us. Those are in there for you guys. All right. It. Yeah. So, and and we we pulled the Foot Clan, right, for, for moments? Yes. All right. So, this is brought to you by you. So, the list starts with Take Lock. So oh, when, yeah. Take when, Lock. When Jason was trapped in his dungeon of horrifically bad takes, which I think actually then it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I think Carson Wentz was... Carson Woods was the Take originator luck. of that, and it worked out for him. The rise of it's football time. Oh, yeah. That's I'm not sure we need to continue the list <laughs> with it's well, football that, time. It wasn't really one moment. You know, that was like a moment every week, but it well, was but spectacular. You wait, you wait for it. Is, this, yes. is today Thursday or is it not Thursday? <laughs> that is, that's really the question you ask. Is it Thursday or is it not Thursday? Uh, Jason's. Crushed soul from the Philip Rivers interception when he declared, I am an M&M with no chocolate. Just a shell of sadness. Uh, another Jason moment. Jason muting himself. Like, where he, he completely forgets how to use a cough button. Oh, I remembered how. <laughs> I, I did it very well. I pushed the button down fully. I just did it in the middle of talking. Like that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a third Jason moment. I totally forgot about this. This, this was picture. must have been the beginning of the year. Fedora Jason. <laughs> Who put this picture in the dog? I don't dog? know, but it's That's sensational. Oh. But remember, we made him wear a fedora for an entire week. Yes, we did. Was this because I shaved my head or I don't... I don't remember. But we should have had you do it then, too. But it, you looked really bad. I did. <laughs> You're I not did. a fed- Like, some guys can do a fedora. I can't do hats. You know... You, if you can't do a hat, then trying to do a fedora... On look, top look, of that. when you wear a fedora as a joke, and it's overtly a joke for the show, and people still say, please take off that fedora, I can't take it, mm-hmm. that you know is a special moment. It was bad. The, the Adam Gase apology. His apology. I asked the question, <laughs> what does an Adam Gase apology sound like? We so we have to be able to link these out so people can remember. Yeah. Uh, but Jason had a very... Appropriate response. Uh, the Halloween costumes. The Halloween costumes this year were a big hit. Darren, I am the Walrus, the the Lizard King, Chris Goblin. 
groinindex.com, which does it, that does the it, link still work? Yeah, you can go to groinindex.com and I still don't even check remember, out the groin. I still don't even remember exactly what we were talking about. It was uh, whose who's groin were we talking about, we Mike? Were, we were talking about Eric Ebron because he had he was coming off some other oh, injury, double groin, and well, it was he was injured, and then uh, out of nowhere, they're like, "Oh yeah, he's got a groin injury." And we had no idea what was happening, and, and then I think we argued about whether you have one groin, yes, or whether you have two, yes, groin. <laughs> we definitely did. Would it be two groin? Or would it be two groins? This is what I'm talking. That's why you need the groin index. Groinindex.com can really clue you in on that. Um, also, the d the domain is available for sale. <laughs> if you're interested, <laughs> you in better bring the, the dollars. Bring, though. bring the dollars. That's a that's a high value website. All right, and then uh, Brooks has insisted that we put in the David yes! Blau David Blau pronunciation <laughs> when he became a vampire on the Megalodon episode. This was yeah. fantastic. I tried to delete this just oh, now. Really? I mean, from it because I. I didn't. I the thought this was a terrible it, moment. Oh, this was a great moment. Yes, we didn't know how to pronounce his name because nobody did. We we. Vet I guess these he things. eventually became a vampire, but for most of it, it was blah. Yes, blah. Dude, and I blah. don't say blah blah blah. Yes. So footyawards.com. Vote now. Moment of the year, nickname of the year, and all those other categories. We'll have the winners on Thursday's episode of the show. It's going to be very exciting. This is a big moment in many of these winners' lives, yeah. one that they the biggest will tell their children and grandchildren about. It's their legacy, really. Their Wikipedia pages will be deleted, and this will be the only thing added to it. It's a really, really big font. Footy Award winner. Winner. Absolutely. I hope we get something. <laughs> I hope we get something uh, we good. Win, we win the, the show moment every well, year. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Go to pristineauction.com for some signed sports memorabilia. Use the code BALLERS. Thank hey, you, guys. Be safe on New Year's Eve, people. Be smart. Goodbye. See you thank next you year. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.